Okay, uh, I'm Matt Sussman. Uh, welcome to my narrative speech. Um, let's get going, I guess. Uh, so, um, previously, and at the time of this, this story happened, I was employed at the University of Iowa Hospital. And um, I was working an overnight shift at the time covering for someone else and um, my daughter um, just started kindergarten and she goes to an after-school program and that is just around the corner from my house actually near where I usually um, park my car at and um, she so I was working third shift at the hospital and went home took the kids to school and then went home and slept all day and woke up in time to go pick up my daughter from her after school program. And so I walked with my son over to pick her up. He's a, a year younger than her. He's just in preschool now, little guy. Anyway, uh, we walked over to get her. And as we were walking back, I was ahead of the kids a little bit. And they were behind me on the sidewalk. And I stopped um, kind of in the middle of a driveway. Um, one, because there's not a lot of traffic there at this driveway. It's all just a parking lot for a few condos. It's actually the parking lot where I usually park my car. And I was waiting for the kids to catch up to me. And I hear a commotion uh, up the street, or in the parking lot area, actually. And I turned and I looked, and it was a white car. Uh, it looked very similar to my car. And it was driving kind of erratically, coming down the length of the parking lot. It's a long... Um, skinny parking lot. There's only parking on one side, and it's very long. Uh, stretches across the back of a whole bunch of condos, and uh, so the car, this car's coming at me. It's a white car. Looks just like mine. I'm like, that's really familiar. And I looked at the license plate number, and I had my license plate a long time, so I recognized my license plate number. That's my license plate. How did someone get my car? There's many questions rolling through my head. And just about the time the kids catch up to me. And I'm like, kids, come with me. And kind of stay out of the way. Because this guy is kind of a crazy driver. And uh, behind me, uh, I hear uh, someone yell. A girl. Um, get out of the way. He doesn't know how to drive. And I turn around and and I said, but he's driving my car. And she goes, oh no. And takes off in her car and uh, I didn't get a description on that car at the time. Anyway, so this guy's coming at me and I go and knock on the window. Sir, uh, where did you get this car from? Oh, it was my friend's car, he says. Uh, I, he said I could drive it. And I'm like, well, that's interesting because I think it's my car. Where did you get the keys for my car? He's like, oh, my friend gave me these keys. He said they were his and lo and behold to my keys. First, I don't know how he got my keys. So, okay, fine. You got my keys, you're driving my car, fine. Can I have my car back? Uh, sure, he says, and he gets out of the car. So, 20-year-old or so African-American male, face tattoo, scary-looking guy. He's pretty cut. I am not, and you can illustrate here, I am not an uh, athletic uh, fit individual. He had nothing to worry about. Could have kicked my butt. Also, two kids in tow. But he hands over my car. Doesn't put it in park, leaves it running, starts to roll away. I, Please put my car in park before you just get out. Oh, okay. Gets out of the car, scurries away. So I drive my car to my house. I put the kids in the back, strap them in, drive my car to my house. I'm a little disoriented. The wife convinces me to call the police. Nice gentleman from Iowa City Police Department comes, chats with me. I give him a description of the guy. He says, okay, might be contacting you. So that night I was going to work again for third shift. I forgot to make coffee. I love coffee. Keeps me going. Totally forgot to make it. So I go over to the come and go to grab an energy drink on my way to work. Or coffee or whatever. I ended up getting an energy drink. As I pull into the parking lot, I see the policeman that I talked to earlier. That's interesting. He's talking to an African American male. On closer inspection, happens to be the same guy. So I wander over. Hey guys, how's it going? Fancy meeting you here. And the cop becomes very distraught. How, why are you here? What is going on? And I'm like, I just live over here. Like, it's kind of my gas station. So, 
the cop comes talks to me after he's still talking to this guy. He's like, hey, we're going to set up a lineup. I'm going to get it a, um, you know, I'll have you uh, do a statement and we'll get a lineup and we'll arrest him the right way. And thanks for coming, but go away. I was like, cool. So I went to work. Didn't think much of it. Uh, a couple days later, hadn't really heard anything back about this. And uh, my wife uh, forwards me uh, a link she found on the Press Citizen website that a young African-American male with a face tattoo, pictures in the paper, same guy, uh, had been arrested at Walmart for stealing um, hundreds of dollars worth of uh, mid-shelf, not really top shelf, but decent vodka from Walmart. Like a lot of it over time and the cops caught him and now he's in jail so yeah they never did get my statement for borrowing my car but i'm okay with that uh but yeah so definitely a much different environment than what i grew up in where uh, for the first 10 years that i drove my car i never bothered locking it or even pulling my keys out of the ignition so who wants my jalopy Apparently up here, everybody. So that's a lesson for you all. Be careful. Uh, hope my story was entertaining for you as it was for me. And have a good night.